Sir, my name is Alexander Osei from Ghana. Basically, today we are going to continue with our lesson, National Income Determination, the multiplier, right? Good. Now, basically, if you talk about multiplier, we are talking about an instrument or a tool that is being used to measure the, the chain that occurs in the national income or the, the chain that occurs in the aggregate expenditure, right, when the autonomous component also changes. I hope it makes sense. Now, from our previous lessons, we understood that we understood that aggregate expenditure is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending, right? Whereby the economy is closed. So we are, we are, we are focusing on the closed economy, right? Aggregate expenditure is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending, right? Now in mathematics, we are saying that if any of these components changes, right? The aggregate expenditure is automatically, automatically going to change. It means that these are autonomous and aggregate expenditure depends on them. So a change in one of the components will automatically cause the aggregate expenditure or the national income um, equilibrium to also change. I hope it makes sense. So we are saying that the multiplier is an instrument or it is being used to measure the change that occurs in the equilibrium national income as a result of a unique change in any of the autonomous components. These are the autonomous components. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So if you are focusing on the closed economy, it means that export and import, they are not going to be part. But I want to teach you so that you understand how to go about it. Now basically we know that when you talk about uh, marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save, we all know that it is the chain that occurs in savings as a result of change in income and the chain that was also occurs in consumption as a, as a result of change in income, right? But the multiplier says that what is the instrument that is used to measure the change? I hope it makes sense. So you are saying that the multiplier is what we use to measure the change. So it is used to measure the change in equilibrium national income. Change in equilibrium national income or change in aggregate expenditure or change in aggregate demand as a result of change in any of these autonomous components. These components are called autonomous because they are on their own. When they change automatically, the equilibrium national income will change. The reason why I'm saying equilibrium national income is that we all know that aggregate expenditure, aggregate expenditure is the same as aggregate demand. Aggregate expenditure is the same as what? Aggregate demand. And aggregate demand is also the same as what? Income or output. I hope it makes sense. Output or income. So if I mention aggregate, if I mention equilibrium national income, it's the same as aggregate demand or aggregate expenditure. Right, good. Now, having understood this, now we are saying that the multiplier comes in when there is a change in one variable that causes other variable to change. So we only calculate for a multiplier when there is a change in one variable, which is causing another variable to change. I hope it makes sense. So we calculate for multiplier whereby any of these autonomous components has changed. And it is thereby causing the aggregate expenditure or the aggregate demand to also change. Hope it makes sense. So that is how basically it is. So multiplier, the symbol for multiplier is K. Why is it K? Because it was being discovered by the Keynes, that the Keynesians, right? So it was being named after their initial K, K, right? So basically, we normally use K to represent what the multiplier. Now the formula for the multiplier is k equal to 1 over 1 minus c whereby this c is the marginal propensity to consume marginal propensity to consume so we can also use b depending on the variable that you want to use right good so what we want to say is that the c or the b is the marginal propensity to consume now trust me trust me marginal propensity to consume minus 1 minus marginal propensity to consume will give us the marginal propensity to save from the marginal propensity and the average propensity. That lesson, I think, is somewhere lesson 8. Go and watch it. Lesson 8. We understood that 1 minus C, 1 minus marginal propensity to consume, is equal to marginal propensity to save. So 1 over 1 minus C, or 1 over 1 minus B, is the same as 1 over MPS, marginal propensity to save. I hope it makes sense. Good. So if the question gives you marginal propensity to consume, 
and you have been told to calculate for the multiplier is 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume or if the question gives you the marginal propensity to save straight away then it's 1 over marginal propensity to save then you calculate it straight away I hope it makes sense now listen to me very careful the bigger the marginal propensity to consume if the marginal propensity to consume is big automatically the marginal propensity to save is going to be small I hope it makes sense. Look at it very careful. Look at it carefully. Look at it carefully. If my marginal propensity to consume is equal to 0 0.9, then my marginal propensity to save is equal to 1 minus 0 0.9. So I'm going to get 0 0.1. So the bigger the marginal propensity to consume, the smaller the marginal propensity to save. The smaller the marginal propensity to save. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So basically, that's how it is. So we are saying that the bigger the marginal propensity to consume, the lower the marginal propensity to save. And the bigger the multiplier. So when the marginal propensity to save is small, when the marginal propensity to save is small, when the marginal propensity to is safe, it means that automatically, we are going to get a bigger multiplier. So when the marginal propensity to save is big, we are going to get a bigger multiplier. Hope it makes sense. And when the marginal propensity is big we are going to get a smaller multiplier i hope it makes sense that's how it is now let us use this one as an example let us use this one let us assume that our marginal propensity to consume our marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.7 marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.7 so multiplier equal to 1 over 1 minus c right so marginal propensity to consume. So 1 over 1 minus marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.7. I hope it makes sense. And the answer for this one is going to give us 3.33. I hope it makes sense. Now, that scenario 2, marginal propensity to consume is equal to 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8. And the answer for this one is going to give us Five. Have you seen it? The bigger the marginal propensity to consume, the bigger the marginal propensity to consume, the bigger the marginal propensity to consume, the bigger the multiplier. Five. And the smaller the marginal propensity to consume, the smaller the multiplier. I hope it makes sense. And the smaller, the smaller the marginal propensity to save, the smaller the marginal propensity to save. Right, the smaller the marginal propensity to save, right? We are saying that the lower the marginal propensity to save, the bigger the multiplier. I hope it makes sense. So basically, that's how it is, right? Sha, once again, my name is Alexander Osei from Ghana. Bye bye.